Hey Now. Hey Now. And welcome back to the show where two childhood friends discuss their favourite childhood movies. I'm Emily Sandford. And I'm Barney Lee. And whether it's iconic lines, musical moments, or just questionable outfit choices, the films we'll be talking about on our show are unique in their own way. And this week, we'll be discussing Space Jam. Warning, this episode contains nostalgia and big love for the quackster of the courts, Daffy Duck. Thank you, thank you. Very funny. Let's laugh at the duck. (laughs) You're so good at that. Really? Yes. I've never owned a retainer, so I'm surprised I can do that. You're like wiping the spit off your face. I know, this yeah. microphone. We don't even have a pop shield on it. <laughs> Call ourselves professional. You're living on the edge. Yeah. I am honestly, kind of just preface this whole podcast record, I'm so nervous to try and do a Looney Tunes impression. I just can't. Honestly, I've tried. It's just not going to go well. It's so difficult. The only one we really know is, what's up, Doc? <laughs> You know, you know, when you occasionally hold a carrot? All the times that you just kind of stand leaning against a tree with a carrot, with an entire carrot with like the green leaves still on the end of it. Yeah, I, I apologise for anyone who's walked past me in Hyde Park. <laughs> You're like, this is where I lean. Yeah. Can't a girl just eat her carrot in peace, for God's sake? <laughs> well, okay, well, Space Jam was such a massively ambitious crossover between Mm -hmm. probably the biggest basketball star of the 90s, Michael Jordan, and Bugs Bunny and the rest of the Looney Tunes. I love that it happened. I think, like, critically, it got a little bit slammed, if I slam (laughs) dunked, if I may say. The original animators of Looney Tunes were a bit sort of... I don't think they really liked the mashup, if that makes sense, because if you're, you know, one of the OGs of Looney Tunes, you're like, oh, no, you know, it doesn't really work as a feature-length film. It works better as, you know, 20-minute clip. So I think they were a little bit against it. But in all fairness, you know, everyone knows about Space Jam. It was just, like, a bit of fun, I think. Yeah. And what I really like about this film is that it actually originated from just a TV commercial... And then they were like, oh, you know, this is potential to be an actual film. Right. So there was an advert that featured Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan together. Yes. The concept of the commercial was called like Hair Jordan. So it was a a Nike commercial. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be upfront. I don't know a bunch about basketball or Michael Jordan's, you know, professional career. What I found out when doing research, which was so interesting, was that the premise of the plot actually really happened Michael Jordan had an initial retirement in 1993 and that was just because he said he kind of lost his desire to play basketball. I think he lost his dad a few months prior. So, right. you know, just wasn't really in the right headspace anymore. And then he surprised like the entire sports industry by signing a minor league baseball contract with the Chicago White Sox in 1994. And he said that he did that because he was pursuing the dream of his dad who always wanted him to play baseball. Oh. It's crazy. So that really happened for a couple of years. And then after that, he returned to play basketball again. Yeah, and thank God he did, because otherwise we wouldn't have this film. Exactly. Fucker in sack attached. <laughs> that, would, that would have been a disaster. <laughs> so the film was released on the 15th of November, 1996. And it was directed by a guy called Joe Pitka, who I had a look at his filmography and the things he's famous for are quite limited. He directed the music video for Michael Jackson for the track, The Way You Make Me Feel. Oh, The okay. way you make me feel. The way you make me feel. <laughs> and he also did a Pepsi advert with Madonna. Okay. And then that was kind of it. So like Space Jam is like a rogue choice for him, but you know, I think he did a good job. Yeah. Okay. It's hard directing cartoon animals. I know, but why did they get him to do that? Because I'm thinking like, this is like a Warner Bros film. Mm. Surely you've got a few directors up your sleeve. (laughs) <laughs> None that wanted to make space chat. Maybe. No. The budget for the movie was eighty million dollars. Woo. And the box office gross was two hundred and fifty million. Okay, so which... you could get a few Air Jordans with that. <laughs> yeah, only a few though. <laughs> it <Two>. was <laughs> as if buying one is an option. Yeah. <laughs> Just one shoe. Yeah. <laughs> I 
meant pairs. You know. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. This was the highest grossing basketball film of all time and is also the highest grossing Looney Tunes film of all time. What was also really interesting is that including the amount of revenue received from merchandise and games, mm. the kind of franchise has grossed over $6 billion. So it just goes to show how lucrative those like toy deals are. Oh my goodness. I know. You know, in 1996, I would love to have had one of those basketball costumes. Oh my God, definitely. I don't know if you remember this because you talking about that has just unlocked a part of my brain, which I've not opened in 25 years do you remember the warner brothers store yes okay so there was a warner brothers store near where barney and i lived when we were growing up i used to love going there so much and do you remember like right at the back of the shop there was like big tv screens that kind of came up with cartoons and stuff like this so this was like the greatest place like if your mum or like parents wanted to go off shopping and you could just be like okay i'm gonna sit in the warner brothers store and then there was like this big silver kind of like plastic tunnel you could like climb in behind the tv really i think it was like designed for kids obviously like you know a bit fun i used to love that oh so great i have this really weird memory of them showing the music video for madonna american pie and i remember i have have this really weird memory of me specifically watching this music video within the warner brothers store on one of their tvs as well oh so weird they also had loads of like harry potter merch because it kind of aligned with that time and i remember they had a little figure of dobby right by the entrance oh my god scary it, honestly it was so scary <laughs> I have to take my socks and go oh my god terrifying um oh who's your favorite looney tune just side note good question i love tweety bird mm-hmm. um tweety pie. <laughs> is it really tweety pie oh my god tweety bird Tweet? Hold on, this is Tweety Bird. Yeah, but it should be Tweety. Oh, Tweety. Oh, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Okay, so she's just called Tweety. I'm 100% sure she's called Tweety Pie, but it's actually just Tweety. Okay, so I thought it was Tweety Bird. You thought it was Tweety Pie. It's just Tweety. That's crazy. Oh my god. What? I'm just reading the Wikipedia. Tweety is male. What? <laughs> Despite the perceptions that people may hold, owning to the long eyelashes and high-pitched voice, Tweety is male. What? Oh my god, my mind is blown. My quenium hurts. My quenium. <laughs> and I like the little granny that like looks, looks after Oh Tweety. my god, yes. And there's this really funny sketch where she's just like burning money in the fire. And I lo- it's so funny. She's like obviously a really rich old lady. Yeah. Just, instead of throwing logs on, she's just like throwing money. He's so good. What so- about you? What's your favorite character? Oh, Daffy Duck, 100%. Oh. He's just like a mess. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he's just like, but he's so funny. I think it's just because I love any character who has kind of like that delivery or is a bit like slapstick. Yeah. Um, and guys, if you haven't done this already, Google Daffy Duck without a beak. Because it gets blown off a lot. <laughs> Honestly, the amount of times that poor thing has ran into some dynamite is yeah. crazy. Can the Looney Tunes ever die? It seems like they get every minute they get squashed or blown up or like put in a blender and then in the next scene they're absolutely fine. Yeah, their fate basically lies in the hands of the illustrators. Yeah. <laughs> Daffy's like, kill me. <laughs> My beak <laughs> can't hang on for much longer. <laughs> He's great. We should also talk about the real actors in this movie. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have Michael Jordan, who we mentioned. What I love is the kind of cameo appearance from Bill Murray. Yeah. It's insane. Apparently, Bill Murray accepted a role in this movie after expressing regret at missing out on a chance to star in the other live action animated film, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh. So he obviously saw it and was like, oh, damn, I could have been in something like that. Because that film is actually so good. Like me and my neighbour used to watch that all the time. We used to love it. That's what I remember anyway. <laughs> so Bill apparently was only supposed to be in that one golfing scene, but he had such a good time. And, and also, I think, kind of really wanted to have a scene with the Looney Tunes that he came back uh, for the final basketball scene at the end. Oh. So he loved it. Lovely. We also have Wayne Knight, who plays Stan Podolak, who's that kind of like lovable assistant who's kind of like stumbling all over the place. Yes. He's just like so hospitable and so nice. Yeah. He's very funny. So you might recognize him from his role in Jurassic Park, where he gets spat on by those Ugh. dinosaurs that are like 
<laughs> you know? So, so what you guys can't see is Barney just like putting his hands by his face and like doing the gills. The, the little, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> he also voices Al in Toy Story 2, Al's <gasps> toy barn. And if you think about it, Al really looks like the actor, Wayne. He does. We also have a cameo from Dan Castanelletta. You guys might know him as Homer Simpson. Yes. Yeah. Among many other characters in The Simpsons. Yeah, that's true. But that was great. He kind of sits in the audience of one of the basketball games. Mm -hmm. He has a few bits of dialogue. He's like really, really into it. Yeah. Another actor who I really like is Danny DeVito. And he is actually the voice of Swat Hammer, the mean kind of mogul who runs Moron Mountain and tries to like enslave the Looney Tunes. We don't need to go into this in detail, but if you don't know, Bugs Bunny is played by Billy West. Who voices... Is Fry in Futurama. Oh, voice acting looks like such a fun gig. Daffy Duck and the Tasmanian Devil are voiced by a guy called D. Bradley Baker. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Bob Bergen. He plays Porky Pig and Tweety Pie or Tweety the boy. (laughs) And then Kath Succi plays Lola Bunny. These actors' names sound like cartoon characters. (laughs) True. (laughs) And finally, we have some cameos from some NBA stars. Mm -hmm. The five players who have their talent stolen in the film Mm -hmm. are Charles Barkley, Larry Johnson, Muggsy Bogues, Patrick (laughs) Ewing, and Sean Bradley. And none of them actually ever won an NBA championship, largely due to Michael Jordan winning six championships with the Bulls (laughs) between... Like 91 to 98. Okay, fair enough. So, um, yeah, they didn't have a chance. Also, can we talk about how fit Michael Jordan is? Oh, those arms. Honestly, Michael Jordan is so fit. (laughs) <laughs> um, and Warner Brothers, they were so accommodating for Michael on this film because Jordan had his own like gym built on the Warner Bros set so he could, you know, keep in shape in between takes. That is mad. Hmm. But gotta keep him happy. 100%. Keep the star happy. <laughs> right. Speaking of stars, shall we move on to our first category, best supporting character? I'm going to pretend to be one of those mice. Best supporting character. Hey Now Hey Now has something very exciting to announce. We've released a gift card and gift wrap collaboration with the incredible British illustrator Zoe Spry. Shut up! Excuse me? No, our Princess Diaries card with Mia. It says, it's your birthday? Shut up! I love this so much. (laughs) (laughs) So if you stand some nostalgic gift cards and gift wrap and want to support the Zoe Spry and Hey Now Hey Now collaboration, Head to zoespry.com. You will not regret it. I want this Meredith card for my birthday in October, please. Being young and beautiful is not a crime, you know. Ugh, a bit vain. That's also on the card. We designed these. How could you forget? So let's talk about best supporting character. And the one that really caught my eye was Nort, the magenta high-pitched alien minion (laughs) who is so evil, but so cute and has like the sweetest voice. Honestly, like Tweety Who, it's all about Nort. She or they... (laughs) I don't even know if these aliens have genders. Yeah. Nort is so kind of like sickly sweet. So when they first land their spaceship in the kind of like Looney Tunes world and they've like accosted Bugs Bunny, one of the aliens goes, hold on there, Mr. Looney Tune. Hey, what do you think we are, stupid? And they pull out a, like a big laser gun. And then Nort's like, don't move a muscle. <laughs> <laughs> They end up turn- looking scary, don't they? Nort is not cute when it turns into that big old monster. Honestly, it's horrific to watch. Like just that combination of like climactic music and like you see flashes of their like skeletons. It's like mm. horrible, but beautifully animated, I should say. Yeah, definitely. I would not like to go to Moron Mountain at all. It looks terrifying. It looks really um, And just for those, you know, Space Jam fans, obviously the aliens' names aren't really said in the film, I don't think. But if you want to know their names, the orange one is called Pound, the green one is called Bang, obviously we've got Nort, and the purple one's called Bupkus, and the blue <laughs> one is called Blanco. Blanco. Blanco is that kind of like druggy one as well. It's just all a bit like... 
dopey. Dopey, yeah. He's like, totally, all right. So where are we going? <laughs> Everyone knows someone a bit like that. To be fair, if I lived in, in Moron Mountain. You would do whatever you need to do to kind of make it a livable situation. Yeah, he's definitely on some like space mushrooms. It's like... <laughs> Okay, so the guy I want to talk about is Stan, the assistant to Michael. He's just so funny. We stan a character like that is basically (laughs) what I wanted to say. There's such a funny moment between Stan, Michael and Daffy Duck. And Stan's like, let me help. Let me help. I can help. I can help. And Michael Jordan's like, what can you do? Well, I may not be very tall, but I'm I'm slow. And then Sylvester goes, enlarged. And then Daffy Duck's like, and the dork. (laughs) He's a big old fat dog. So you do not want him playing on your basketball team. No, he is the ball. <laughs> Basically. I mean, there's a bit where he gets like inflated and then to deflate, he kind of flies around the whole basketball court like farting. <laughs> not cute. So much so that even the, the animated skunk has a peg over its nose. It's like, oh, this is too bad even for me. <laughs> gosh that is so so bad we should probably award best supporting character to someone who is god bless them they try so hard don't they and they're always just the butt of the joke it is of course daffy duck (laughs) we knew the impressions would be bad in this episode but it's fine daffy duck how do you say it daffy daffy duck I'm um, only going to get worse. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, guys. I just want to ruin my microphone, basically. Yeah, he's just pesky, isn't he? He doesn't mean to be. He's got so much confidence for someone who just gets absolutely, like, ripped. Yeah. <laughs> he's so funny. He's yeah, literally so funny. You feel bad for him. Yeah. Like, when he walks out on that court and there's, like, literally crickets. <laughs> But no, he's so funny. He has some amazing quotes. Yeah, his ideas just get absolutely slammed. You know that bit when he's like, how's this for a new team name? The Ducks. (laughs) (laughs) And Bugs when he's like, oh, no, 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 please. What kind of Mickey Mouse organization would name their team The Ducks? So sue me. It's just a suggestion. (laughs) (laughs) Which is so layered because... Warner Bros. was obviously taking the mick out of Disney, who had just before this released a movie called The Mighty Ducks about a a nice hockey team. So, um, love a layer joke. Yes. So look, Daffy didn't win the game, but he will win Best Supporting Character. So this one's for you. Thank you. Thank you. Clean up on aisle three. (laughs) Okay, so now we're going on to most iconic outfit. No, it's a cartoon. <laughs> the Looney Tunes characters are naked pretty much throughout almost the whole film. Yeah, why is Lola Bunny in shorts and a top and Bugs is just like, I'm just going to have my... Uh... Rabbit dick out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my coward. Oi, oi, oi. Well, that's exactly something that I want to talk about. So when Bugs Bunny is holding the kind of cartoon union meeting, Mm. Daffy Duck bursts through in his like showering gear and he's got a shower cap on and he's got a towel wrapped around his waist. Why is he wearing a towel if he's normally naked when he's dry? (laughs) He goes, oh God, this impression is going to be awful. Stop the music. Tap Duck coming through. Jesus, getting so a guy can't even get himself wet around here. <laughs> oh, I'm cringing. I'm so bad at this. Oh, oh my God. it's fine. Oh, my God. Daffy does have some iconic moments, you know. I really like that bit where for the ultimate game, he's wearing like a rubber ring and a cod piece. And it's just like... <laughs> What's a cod piece? It's like kind of what guys put over there to stop it getting hit, I think. Oh, like a cup. Yeah. Oh. You should know this, but you don't like sport. When am I playing sport ever? I, 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 I thought it was just something guys knew. <laughs> oh my God. Remember in our high school musical episode, I told you about how I was literally listening to Bop to the Top during a football game at school. <laughs> there we go. Da, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> Barney, you let in 10 goals. Oh, excuse me, I'm dancing here. <laughs> 
we also have that scene where they're trying to recruit the Looney Tunes to be in the basketball team. Mm. And they're like, now which of you Maroons have ever played basketball before? And Duffy Duck comes in and he's like, well, I have coach. And there's an important and strategic question that I need to ask. And then all this like runway, like disco music <laughs> starts playing. He bursts through down a catwalk wearing this amazing <laughs> outfit. And he's like, what do you think? I'm kind of partial to purple and gold myself. <laughs> It goes better with my coloring. <laughs> and then Porky Pig walks in. He's like, oh, good guy, guys. And then he looks at Daffy Duck and he's like, oh, nice outfit, da, da, Daffy. Porky Pig's got taste. He does have taste. <laughs> Literally. Poor Porky guy. <laughs> tastes delicious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's Porky Pig? He's not in the sequel. Oh. <laughs> IMDb, the great hog roast. <laughs> There's an apple in my mouth. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna, gonna take a nap in the uh, the, the, the oven. <laughs> Sleep tight. There's the scene, obviously, where Michael gets pulled into the Looney Tunes world, yeah. and when they're on the golf course, and it's Bill Murray actually who is wearing this like umbrella hat. Yes, and it's so it's like a really nice like red plaid. Yeah. I think very stylish. I mean, ironically, they're funny to wear, but not seriously. Well, do you remember when we both wore umbrella hats? Yes, but that was because we were dressing up as raining cats and dogs, and it was funny. Oh, yeah. It was funnier than it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> it's clever. Yeah. We had a little, like, face paint of a cat and a dog, and then we had attached pictures of cats and dogs falling from our umbrella hats yeah ever man iconic i say and i still wear mine every day <laughs> but i think we just need to give a little nod to michael jordan's like basketball outfit and his cool like white and black air jordans iconic michael such a look and the fact that he wears his lucky shorts underneath his regular basketball shorts as well oh the north carolina ones yeah and everyone's like ew <laughs> <laughs> but i wash them oh, okay <laughs> sure 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 <laughs> But we have to award most iconic outfit to the Toon Squad's basketball uniforms. They are instantly recognisable. Yeah, if I ever wanted to take up basketball, I'd want to have a jersey like that. Completely. Like, they just, uh, they look so chic. For the sequel, which we should discuss a bit later on in the show, they got a bit of a revamp. Mm -hmm. So they're still definitely inspired by the original, but they're just a little bit more 21st century. Yeah, definitely. And the characters look great in them. Lola Bunny, Lola Bunny really pulls them off. She gets a wolf whistle from the crowd. Yeah. (laughs) From like 10 wolves. (laughs) Before devouring her. Yeah. (laughs) Deleted scene. Where's Porky and Lola? Uh, (laughs) What's like a rabbit dish? Welsh rabbit? No, that's cheese on toast. (laughs) Okay, so now we're going on to best musical moment. Now, some of you might not know who the original composer is for Looney Tunes. Um, He's a guy called Carl W. Stalling. And he did a lot of animations in his time. But obviously for this film, the producers felt that they didn't want to create something that, you know, didn't sound modern, basically. Mm -hmm. So they got a guy called James Newton Howard to come on board and do like a Stalling kind of inspired soundtrack, but would work in like modern context. They had 99 musicians like doing the orchestra for this film. Wow. And yeah, so it sounded really like Looney Tunes, but also cool at the same time because yeah. hello michael jordan's in it and actually michael jordan approved the tracks that were on this film because obviously you know they wanted it to be representative of him and cool music of the time so it's very like r&b and hip-hop based yeah i'm into it uh, great i'm glad that he consulted on this i mean we have amazing songs on the soundtrack i think i want to give a shout out to everybody dance now boom 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 I mean, yes. I mean, that's like the best kind of like get ready music, isn't it? Yeah. We also have pump up the jam, pump it up while your feet are stamping. So good. It actually reminds me of this. Now that's what I call like 90s anthems CD that I used to have. What now album are they on now? Like it's over 100. Oh my gosh. One of my old bosses used to be the voiceover for now. That's what I like. He did really? all the anthems. Every time I got back from work, I was like, oh God, I follows me home yeah he's just on the tv wherever you go and in the bushes outside your house Um, you're like oh hey here's a tea for you now that's what i call tea (laughs) (laughs) 
We are also treated to salt and pepper upside down. Upside down. Boy, you're turning me inside out. So that happens when the aliens are taking the basketball player's talent. Mm. It's a very good scene. Pivotal scene. Mm -hmm. You know, when the aliens are in that big disguise, they've got the coat on, (laughs) the fedora hat and like sneaking. So good. (laughs) During the ultimate game, we've got, you ready for this? So that's the Tune Squad versus the Mon Stars. (laughs) Yeah. Love the names. Yeah, such a good song. And I feel like they play that at like any basketball game. Yeah. I think like legally they have to play it. Yeah, it's incredible. It gets everyone so pumped. Another song that we need to talk about is I Believe I Can Fly. <laughs> yes. Woo! Classic. Classic, although we are not going to talk about who sang that song. Oh, no. no. Yeah, but no. it's a good song. Yeah, we don't like him. But one of my favorite YouTube videos, however, is I Believe I Can Fly Sloth. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. Good shit, no, do a live viewing. Oh, oh there's an ad for, ooh, Frozen's coming to London. Oh. So there's a sloth trying to cross the road and someone's picking the sloth up from what the scruff of its neck, I guess. God, sloths are slow. Yeah, he's picked him up. Oh my God. He's like stretched out like he's flying. That's so funny. And now he's on the other side of the road. I thought like an alligator was going to come out the bush and eat him. <laughs> oh or something. my God, that would be a better ending. No. How funny. That's amazing. But obviously we can only award one song, Best Musical Moment. And I think we're in agreement that it has to be... Space Jam, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> only because it is actually like such a good song. Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. Welcome to the Space Jam. All right. So it's recorded by the Quad City DJs and it kind of acts as like the overall. It's basically like the Space Jam theme tune. It's amazing. It is still on Spotify. You can go listen to it now. It has had 22 million listens, although obviously that does not surprise me one bit. No. (laughs) And I feel like this song really was like... A jam? A jam. Okay, what is a Space Jam? (laughs) Like a traffic jam in space? Like, why is it called jam? Oh, yeah. Quick, Google it. (laughs) Michael Jordan might be listening. Oh, okay. Google's telling me jam is slang used for describing a dunk shot. Okay, Uh, right. Mystery solved. How has it taken me 25 years to find that out? (laughs) Whoops. (laughs) Okay, next we're on to best quote and obviously the looney tunes are known for some amazing catchphrases and space jam just gives us so many more ones to quote now oh my god definitely it's the delivery for me just for a bit of context into what the whole film is about there's this bit between michael and bugs bunny and michael's like what's going on here well, well why michael i thought you never ask you see these aliens came from outer space and they want to make us slaves in their theme park eh? <laughs> <laughs> What the week here? They're little, so we challenge them with a basketball game. But then they show up and they ain't so little. They're huge. We need to beat these guys because they're talking about slavery. They're going to make us do stand-up comedy. The same jokes every night for all eternity. We're going to be locked up like wild animals and then trotted out to perform for a bunch of low-brow, bug-eyed, fat-headed, humor-challenged aliens. Eh? But what I'm trying to say is, we need your help. <laughs> yeah, I'm a baseball player now. Right. And then Bugs pulls out a rabbit skull. Is he a murderer? <laughs> and goes... And I'm a Shakespearean actor. (laughs) Shady. I know. Oh my God. He's the one who put Porky Pig in the hog race. For sure. (laughs) (laughs) It's a little hot in here. (laughs) Why are you bathing me in apple sauce? (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, I I need that deleted scene. We also have that scene when the aliens first become huge monsters. Mm -hmm. The blue kind of druggy one. It's like, hey, little pig. And the pig's like, ah! I would be real wit 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 myself. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. That is so cute. I really like this scene where um, Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny are going into Michael Jordan's house. You know when like the kids are awake and then they like see that Daffy and Bugs are in the house. Yeah. So I know why are you not terrified? But all right. <laughs> Daffy Duck's like, you think she's got enough toys? And then Bugs says, speaking of toys, remember those mugs and t-shirts and lunch boxes with our pictures on them? Yes. You ever see any money from all of that stuff? 
not a cent. Hmm, me neither. We gotta get a new agent. We're getting screwed. <laughs> That's true. Like I mentioned, six billion dollars in like games and merchandise. God, they're missing out. I know. Daffy could get so many new beaks with that money. <laughs> Necessary. Oh my God, have a, like a subscription. A Just beak sub. A new beak in the post every week. <laughs> They could call it Beak a Week. Am I a marketing genius? Oh, My employers it? would say no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I wanted to give a shout out to a scene between Michael Jordan and Bill Murray towards the end. Bill is trying to play basketball and Michael's like, no, no, no. And Bill Murray goes, it's because I'm white, isn't it? And Michael Jordan says, no, Larry's white, so what? And for context, Larry Johnson is one of the five stars who gets their, their talent mm-hmm. stolen. And Bill replies, Larry's not white, Larry's clear like so pale transparent basically oh oh my god (laughs) this is a really hilarious moment with charles barkley and the psychiatrist because obviously their talent's been taking from them they think they're going crazy because they literally can't even like pick up a ball and like dribble it around the courts and charles is like it was this girl five feet nothing block my shot when did you first start having this dream it wasn't a dream it really happened <laughs> he's that bad that was such a good scene you just see that girl and her friends just completely lose respect for him yeah, in like one second <laughs> stan also has a moment where he's picking up michael from that like hotel room mm-hmm. and he goes come on michael it's game time get your hands on lace up your nikes Grab your Wheaties and your Gatorade and we'll pick up a Big Mac on the way to the ballpark. First of all, that Mm. sounds like the worst diet ever for an athlete, but best diet ever to eat. And um, what I found out is that all of those brands that Stan mentions are previous brand endorsement deals that Michael Jordan had in the 90s. Ah. So it was a little like wink and a nod to the audience. Nice. It's funny. It's so funny, like, athletes wouldn't endorse McDonald's anymore. I know. Isn't that so funny? That is wild. (gasps) I miss the days when we were naive about health, kind of. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, sometimes I'm like, life would be so more stress-free if I didn't realise that Cocoa Pops were bad for me. Tell me about it. I used to have ricicles every morning for breakfast. You remember the ones? Yeah. Rice Krispies, but with, like, coated in sugar. Yeah, and then you would obviously sprinkle it more sugar on top. See? Oops. I didn't know. It was the 90s. It was the 90s. <laughs> now it's gluten-free this, dairy-free this. I suppose it's saving the planet, I say. So funny. Yeah, I'll be like, oh no, I have to have almond milk in my coffee. Meanwhile, I'm having like a block of cheese for dinner. <laughs> Honestly, priorities all over the place. Yeah, help where you can. Yeah. Well, yeah, true. Exactly. I really like Tweety Pie, you know, just the classic. Oh, I taught, I taught. I did. I did see Michael Jordan. <laughs> it's so cute. And when one of the monsters hits Tweety over to the other side of the court and Tweety's like, oh, my poor widow cranium. <laughs> oh, I'm going to start using that if anything hurts my brain. Yeah. Oh, my poor little cranium. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what should I order from Deliveroo? Oh, my poor widow cranium. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the hardest decision. <gasps> is it Wagamama's or is it Nando's? Right, I definitely think the best quote should go to the scene where the Looney Tunes have brought Michael Jordan into their world and they have shown him their kind of like rundown basketball court. Yes. So Michael Jordan goes, This place is a mess. And Daffy says, Meth? You're worried about a little meth? Oh, there's nothing here that a little spit shine wouldn't fix. Spit shine! Spit shine! <laughs> and the camera pans on. All of the Looney Tune characters are just taking their turn spitting on the floor to clean it. They're like... <laughs> <laughs> and Michael Jordan's looking around like, oh my God, where am I? And then at the end, Taz takes two mops and starts spinning around the entire basketball court to clean it all up. And at the end, he goes, lemony fresh. <laughs> He used to have a spin-off show. He did, and they'd show it before school in the morning. I love that program so much. His dad used to love orange juice. (laughs) (laughs) That's a question. Why could his whole family talk except for Taz? He was a nightmare. He was a nightmare. And then they live in like a cave. Also, what is a Tasmanian devil? One of the most dangerous animals in the world. You don't want to run into a Tasmanian devil or a honey badger. And you certainly don't want to run into (gasps) like a hippopotamus. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at a picture. It's kind of like a big rat that also looks like a little like bear as well i know like you'd think oh that's quite cute but really that would bite you and kill you are they that dangerous Mm. oh wow tasmanian devils are characterized by their stocky and muscular build black fur 
pungent odor, extremely loud and disturbing screech, keen sense of smell, and ferocity when feeding. Mm. Wow. And it has the strongest bites per unit body mass of any predatory land mammal. Oh. Yeah, you're not you don't want to be in a room with a Tasmanian devil. No. Otherwise, you know, if if they weren't that bad, they'd be called Tasmanian Angel. Angels. Angels. <laughs> 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 okay so now we're on to our favorite part of the podcast which is can we discuss now maybe we should start with the sequel <gasps> of space jam which was out in july yes of this year i mean it took 25 years to come out but you know that warner brothers was working on a sequel as early as 1996 so they wanted to do a sequel straight away, but Michael John didn't agree to star in the sequel, so they cancelled it. Oh, right. Okay. As alternatives, they also tried to look into doing a film called Spy Jam with Jackie Chan, Race Jam with Tiger Woods, okay. and Skate Jam with Tony Hawk. They all sound great. I mean, I'd watch them. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> July was when we were finally blessed with Space Jam, A New Legacy, and it stars LeBron James. It basically centres around a kind of like rogue artificial intelligence kidnapping LeBron's son and then LeBron has to work with Bugs Bunny to win another basketball game. Oh, that's intense. I'm so glad that they were able to bring it back. Yeah, and the more LeBron James on our screen, the better, if you ask me. Honey, you ain't wrong. What's so sad, though, is that when the movie came out in 96, they had a promotional website, which Mm. imagine the internet in 1996. So, like, prehistoric. (laughs) What was amazing is that all these years later, that website has remained untouched. So if you literally, if you could go on, you know, spacejam.com and the website that comes up is the exact same as it looked in 1996, which was so cool. But sadly, when the Space Jam sequel came out this year, they updated the website to promote the new film. So all of that is gone. Oh my goodness. Sad times. But maybe we should kind of put that kind of internet behind us. Oh yeah, in the past. Leave that with Smarter Child. Um, (gasps) Smarter Child! Yeah! They're kind of like AI that would talk back to you. Uh (gasps) Uh-huh, on MSN. I forgot about that. Yeah. What? stuff would it say i don't know i just remember like harassing it why i just want to love (laughs) yeah 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 go back and befriend that talking paperclip (laughs) (laughs) um i also just don't really understand anything to do with the point system in basketball watching space jam it's clear anything goes in that second half like these people were not abiding to any rules i know and also like the last 10 seconds of their game was literally like 10 hours yeah it was you know so it was long. like 10 9 <laughs> 8 you know like it, was, it had to be like double yeah, everything oh yeah, my god yeah but honestly at one point they tied dynamite to the hoop they let a skunk roam around they like literally shoot the teeth of one of the monsters with a gun oh my god and then at the end Michael Jordan's arm stretched literally like halfway across the court to get that like last like Duncan there's that really iconic scene of all of the Toons characters like sitting on the bench and they're all like absolutely destroyed from the game yeah like we've got sylvester but he looks like his body's a fried chicken yeah and we've got the coyote who's like sitting on the side he's got like leg and cast arms and bandages yeah. and he's got like a sign that says extreme pain on it which is <laughs> when, did he, when did he find time to make that sign i don't know <laughs> It's the tunes. They they know. They got they a few know. things on their sleeves. Speaking of the tunes, we should maybe just give a mention to some of the dodgy CGI in this film. Okay, yeah. I mean, overall, very watchable. And I think it, the film really does stand up today. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's a 1996 movie, so... They did the best they could. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. There's just a couple bits where I just kind of winced at. There's the scene where the monsters, like, fold Michael Jordan into the shape of a basketball and, like, dribble him around the court and pass him round. All his limbs are all, like, bent round, and then his face is just like... Ah! Yeah. <laughs> 
And that was just a little bit janky. Yeah. And we also have the scene where Stan is reinflated after being crushed by the Monstars. Yeah. And he looks like this massive skin suit. <laughs> it's so gross. Oh. He's just kind of like floating up around the arena. Ugh. Aside from that, though, I think they did a good job. Oh my gosh. Overall, I really think that the um, uh, cartoon is really nice. That's kind of how they talk in Looney Tunes. <laughs> At the end of every sentence. <laughs> Shall we go on to tw- 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 Twivia? Well, okay. As long as it doesn't hurt my widow queenium. <laughs> Okay, here we go with the trivia round. Wow, if I'm going to beat you in this, I'm going to need some of Michael's special stuff. Ew. Water. Oh! (laughs) Honey, whatever helps. (laughs) Water. Okay, well, here's question one for you. What does Lola Bunny hate being called? Doll. Yes! Eh, What's up, Doc? Don't ever call me doll. And then she like flicks her ear out of her face. Yeah. Um, what is the name of Michael's child sports team? Is it like Lil Sluggers? <laughs> Suffering Sluggers! Lil Sluggers! Yeah! Cyclone. Oh, I prefer Little Sluggers. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, can you tell me who refereed the final match between the Monstars and the Toon Squad? Oh my God, is it Larry Bird? <laughs> Suffering Sluggers. No. Oh no, who? It's Marvin the Martian. Okay. And I'll tell you why. It's actually quite clever. It's because he's both a Looney Tune and an alien. He's neutral. Like he's impartial to the match. Ah. Oh. So he'd be a very fair referee. Um, Michael Jordan has a bulldog, which we see in <gasps> the scene when we're going to his house. Can you tell me the name? Is it Seymour? So close. Oh. It's Charles. Oh, so close. How is Charles close to Seymour? <laughs> I of the letter C. <laughs> Seymour's an S! I know. I just realised how stupid that was. <laughs> I'm going to deduct a point okay, for that, fine. Blunder. Suffering <laughs> <laughs> suckatash! <laughs> that was accidental. Oh, good. Um, mm. What do the monsters call Michael Jordan to annoy him? They give him a little insult. One of the monsters goes, "You're all washed up." Well, I've got no idea. Do they call him like five foot two? Suffering suckatash. They call him baldy. Oh. <laughs> What is the number on Michael Jordan's basketball shirt? Is it 23? Yes. Woohoo! Eh, what's up, Doc? Because that was his original number. Oh, very good. Okay, here's my fourth question to you. What does Swackhammer want Michael Jordan to do if he loses the game and becomes enslaved at Moran Mountain? Sign autographs all day long and do like one-on-one coaching with the people. Yes! Eh, what's up, Doc? Well oh, done. Thank you, thank you. God, you would get carpal tunnel syndrome so quickly doing that all day. Honey, you would. <laughs> and with his big hands? I mean, oh. yeah. <laughs> Um, What is Bugs's basketball shirt number? Is it um 13? <laughs> Suffering suckatash. No, it's number one. <laughs> oh, the one and only. <laughs> 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 Okay, my final question to you. What do the Looney Tunes characters refer to the real world as? Oh my goodness, I thought I know this one. <laughs> um, the 3D? Yes. So they would call it 3D... Land. Yes! Eh, what's up, Doc? Fair enough. <laughs> it looks quite good to be 2D. I'd be a lot skinnier. <laughs> I'm so slim. Um, (laughs) Find me that tunnel, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so what was the final score for the Toon Squad versus Monstars? So obviously the Toon Squad win. Yeah. What was the score? Oh my goodness. Is one of the scores 69? Wait. Wait. No. Oh Oh gosh, I have no idea. (laughs) Suffering Suckatash. 77, 78. Oh, of course. I remember. Yeah, of course. It was such a close one. Oh. And that 10 seconds, I'm sorry, lasted so long. Yeah. What the heck? I've seen numbers just 
like don't make sense in Looney Tunes world. No. <laughs> it's Looney. It was the 90s. It was a Looney time. So that concludes our episode on the 1996 classic feature film Space Jam. I can't believe it. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> those mice are so cute um yeah actually thank you so much for listening i really enjoyed that i thought that did that was a w- really good episode <laughs> um guys if you leave us a five star review on apple podcast i promise emily will never do a looney tunes impression again i think you should do it right now <laughs> that is a great idea <laughs> No, honestly, we would appreciate it so much. And honestly, while you're there, why don't you check out our brand new collaboration with British illustrator Zoe Spry? Yes, all the details are in the podcast description. We've collaborated on seven gift card designs and three gift wraps. They're flying off the shelves, if I may say so. So if you want to get these designs, go to zoespry.com. That's Z-O-E-S-P-R-Y.com. It's worldwide shipping. So it's not just exclusive to people in the UK. Um, and we really hope you like it tag us getting one of the products would be a slam dunk in my opinion oh i see what you did there and that is coming from someone who doesn't understand basketball i think that's a positive term (laughs) slam dunk your debit card on your desk and purchase some cards (laughs) (laughs) right well i think there's nothing else left to say except that's all folks (laughs) 